Hi, we're The Church, and this is Records In My Life. How I loved your diamond eyes I got no time for private consultation Under the Milky Way Can you get me Peter Gabriel on the phone? I want to ask, ask him a question about symbols. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Charles. How are you today? I'm happy standing here against this lovely mural in this shady part of Vancouver, talking to you guys. It's like my whole life has led up to this moment. <laughs> This was start, part of the plans of Starfish, know, right? The 30-year anniversary? I reckon this could be the turning point for my career and things could get good from here on in. And congratulations on that, by the way. On what? This <laughs> long the career. 30th anniversary. 30th anniversary yeah. of Starfish, not yes. the band. Yes. Yeah. That, that's what I meant to say. That's what, what I was trying to say. In this band, every year from now on is the 30th anniversary of one fucking album or another. It's a good... So it get is. Used to it. It's a good every marketing. Album, it's every good. album, is, every year is a fucking anniversary year. That's right. So let me ask you a question. What was back in the day when that record was being made? What, what kind of albums were you listening to? What was inspiring you? Me. Each one of you, if possible. I think New Gold Dream you like that because we got the producer from New Gold Dream to do the album before. Well, that was 1985. Yeah, that was the album before that. I, you know, I've always just listened to the same stuff. David Bowie, Bob Dylan, The Beatles, The I Stones. I told you to say that. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I wasn't listening to anything new then. I'm not listening to anything new. Which, I just listen to classic Bowie, which, music. Which, which I'm Bowie with him. albums? Which Bowie albums? Yes. Um, everything from um, Space insane. Oddity, everything from Space Oddity up to Scary Monsters. Okay. Yeah. And what about The Beatles? Um, the album. psychedelic period. Magical psychedelic. Mystery Tour, which wasn't really an album, is the yeah. best album that's my ever made album. by any band ever. My but it wasn't album. really an album until later when they compiled all their singles. So okay, you're listening to the Beatles, but this, you're a young, young person. Let's go back to even yeah, when you were I'm younger. Not. What what give us an album that inspired you to start playing music? Jimi Hendrix Smash Hits. Okay. Did you learn how and to play the along that? Or? Well, I was a drummer. I was listening to the Shadows and Jimi Hendrix Smash Hits, and as a drummer, listening to Mitch Mitchell, I got exposed to Hendrix and and uh, yeah and then Pink Floyd and Roxy music so how did you get how did you learn a friend those of mine songs? gave me his records before he got chucked out of Australia he gave me his Roxy music collection and his um, Pink Floyd collection and I've treasured it ever since and I'm selling everything else that I've got on vinyl and keeping those so why did Sid what was Sid Vicious as big because he used to wear a t-shirt saying I hate Pink Floyd you know, Sid Vicious from the Sex Yeah, who's stuff. listening to he, fucking he was Sid a, Vicious? He was a bastion of ba well, how Seriously. many songs? Did he write any songs? Oh, that's right. No. I was just wondering was why, why he had such a disdain for uh, Pink Because he wanted to piss people off. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Give us some good Australian <laughs> bands back in the day when you were... The Church, the Church, the Church. <laughs> the church. <laughs> no, the church. Masters of Apprentices, the Easy Beats. Right. Masters of Apprentices was the first guitar riff I ever learned. It was a song called Turn Up Your Radio, and then I found out it was a, a saxophone riff anyway, but the, gu the guitarist had the best dirty sound. Any um, album titles in particular? That the toast, album their time. album was called A Toast to Panama Red, which was about marijuana. No! How Steve, Panama Red? in 1970. Don't talk about that stuff. <laughs> I'm going to go down the shop, see if they've got any Panama Red when this interview's over. They might. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Russell Morris, The Real Thing. It was a six-minute single that... Um, was produced by the top of a, an editor of a teenage music magazine who became like a worldwide known celebrity of uh, interviewer later on and he produced this song that was, that was like the Beatles six minutes long they refused to release it and when he when they finally released it it was number one for three months and it's the psychedelic epic of all time pretty much should be a worldwide known song Russell Morris the real thing first now, record bought Get your yayas out. Live record. It got bought for me on a, on a cassette. So, but then just to counter that, I was given Billy Cobham Spectrum. So oh, it's like, oh God, God, I hate to that. drummer. I'm I caught agree. between the that, two. That was the classic. The two sides of, of, of drums. So John Bonham I'm and weird... Billy Cobham. No, no, not John Bonham. Bonham. Cobham. You should change your name to something Nobham. Charlie Watts. Nobham. Charlie Tim, Watts. Tim Nobham. And Billy Cobham. So that's that's the fusion. And John. And Bonham. a bit of Pete. 
Anyway, the point is, get your yayas out. It's a live record. I never had a li- an actual Stones record. I just learned everything, all the banter, everything about that record. That turned me on to the Stones too, because yeah. the early pop stuff was kind of not, wasn't that big on it. It's Mick Taylor is on it. And but get your yayas out. That was kind of like, and a lot of live albums. Who live at Leeds? Woodstock, of course. Um, Lou Reed, live rock and roll animal. Live. Steve doesn't rate live records, but I found them really influenced me. What yeah. about Live at Leeds by the Who? Live at Leeds by the Who. Yeah. Is that a good record? Good live I'd rather record? listen to Tommy. Yeah. No, but I'm not mad on the only really live album I really do like is is Rock and Roll Animal by Lou Reed. Other, other than that, I don't really love like live records that much. Cortez. What, the Hoople Live was okay, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I'd rather have I'd rather have a studio album. I don't know. Right. Right. Live's live and. St- you know, I was going to ask. Never you, the I was twain shall meet. To another question. Is there any artist that you you're enjoying? There's, there's just loads of them. I mean, I, it's not any one. I'd want anyone to hang it on. I mean, I like the way King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard have reinvented rock and roll a little bit. They made it hard for people to sort of do stuff without sounding boring, which is cool. Yeah. And they've released. Like, they're they're released Australian. Four albums this yeah. year too, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I thought it was just four albums four. last month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, they, they won to put out five albums in one year. Steve, are you a big fan of King Gizzard uh, and the Lizard Wizard? I don't know. Well, I don't really understand what all the fuss is about. He thinks microtonal guitars sound out of tune. No, I'm just saying that. They're actually really close to our ethic in a way. Like, we've just been so we sort of non-stop creators and don't give a shit about the environment around us and just keep on going ahead kind of on our own. But that's exactly what they're like. So I, I like that parallel. I mean, no rules, you know. I mean, it's unfortunate that we kind of fell out of the mainstream for a while, but the good thing about that is we get to do what we want to do. So we just, we're pretty much untarnished. We're not, we're not, yeah, we're not shackled by anything. Which, and which album should the church, you guys have a, a you've been together a long time making music. How, how, many, how many albums do you have? About 14? Oh, about 30. Including compilations. Right, right. But like, oh, like studio records, which, which album should I buy? Because my son... Priestic was Aura, or a Further Deeper, I'd say. Hologram of Baal, Forget Yourself, and the last two albums. We've, we've got an album for every occasion. If you, if you, there's, you can't pen it. It's the bizarre thing. It just sounds like the church. You go trawling through the back catalogue, you know, close to 400 songs or whatever, you'll find everything in there if you want to search, like, genre. The whole genre tagging thing's a load of rubbish anyway. Okay, guys, well, I don't want to torture you too much longer. Um, we like to ask our guests for... Any words of wisdom or advice, a joke, a mantra? Peace. Peace. Be nice to people. As in the Australian Bible, don't be... (laughs) Don't be a dick. That's a good one. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe and if you're really feeling it please hit us up on patreon cheers